I simply break down painting into simple logical steps that every um, beginner can follow, just like uh, working classes. So in coming class, um, the teacher will say, um, so in an article, add in five, 500 grams of sugars, um, add in two egg yolks, and stir clockwise for two minutes until you reach a certain consistency. So painting is usually be not being taught this way, but it can be done. Um, these are very beautiful paintings, and when you look at it, it looks really complicated. Um, but believe me, it's quite simple to do. If I break it down, it's simple logical steps. Okay, so let's take a look at how this painting is done, what steps it takes. First, on the black background, we paint in a layer of uh, cosmic clouds in white. And then we add some more white to brighten it up. And then add in some blue, some purple. Okay, something else. Okay, some more pink. And then finally, uh, some more purple and then flickering the stars. There you go. A beautiful composition. For a simple composition like this, actually only takes about one and a half hour. Um, for well, something like this, uh, it takes longer because uh, there are more details in it, but still, it's something um, absolute beginners can manage. Uh, so, uh, if you are an absolute beginner, when you see something like this, you will have no idea how to go about doing it. You wouldn't be able to work out the steps it takes, but then if I show you um, the steps, you can definitely go from step one to the final piece. Um, the beautiful things about painting the cosmos is that there's no mistakes um, because there's no defined shapes, there's no right and wrong palettes, any shape goes, any color goes. Um, this takes away the fear of failure for the students. So everyone is very um, scared of making mistakes of going wrong. It's not just about making in their everyday life too. So to encourage uh, absolute beginners to make more art, you have to take away this fear by minimizing the possibilities of them making mistakes. So there are some subjects that are very suitable for um, absolute beginners because um, there's no writing wrong, like space here. And this Andy Warhol inspired pop art painting uh, workshop is also 100% foolproof. It's very fun, and everyone can paint their own pop art using their own picture. So let's see how Andy Warhol is done. Um, he did his pop art with screen printing. So each screen allows him to print one color on. For a piece like this, there are four colors in it. So it will take him four steps, four screens to print all the colors. And for our workshop, uh, only the first step is printed, the rest is painted. Uh, so what you need to do is you need to send me your picture, picture you want to use for the painting beforehand and I will turn it into black and white, have it printed on the canvas to act as an underpainting. So when you come to class, I teach you a method called glazing. Uh, glazing allows you to add paint on top without covering the base. Um, multiple layer of glazes are added. And in three hours, you can do something like this, um, a pop art with your own picture. And this glazing technique that I teach is not something I invented. It's actually a very old portrait painting techniques that the master used. So to do a portrait uh, like this, the first step is to sketch in the portrait, and then you have to do a layer of gray, uh, we call it dead layer. Uh, it's in gray scale, um, well, it looks dead, so it's called the dead layer. And then after this dead layer is dry, um, all you do is you do the glazing in full colors. Um, each place, each layer of places deepens your color intensity. So the first step, the sketch and the depth layer, <coughs> the hardest part, is most time consuming, uh, takes a lot of effort. And for our annual workshop, um, we do this part here. We have this depth layer printed so that you can enjoy the rest of the painting. It's a lot of but people find it. So to make it even more fun, we do the painting, we do the glazing in pop art colors. 
so you can go crazy with abnormal colors and there's no right and wrong, um, any color goes. Uh, people are very, um, um, they enjoy with this art really much because um, um, painting their own portraiture is something they never imagined they could do in their lifetime because um, they, they, they don't have the talents or they don't have the skills or they don't have the time. So to be able to do this makes them really happy. And marbling on canvas is another fun fact. Um, it's inspired by Shimina Gashi, a Japanese ancient craft. So uh, with Shimina Gashi, the ink is stripped on the water, and you can manipulate the paint around and to create this marbling pattern. And for me, I tweak the techniques a little bit. I use acrylic, liquid acrylic. And I create the, I create the uh, aqueous surface on the canvas so that we can do the modeling directly on canvas. And resulting in this very beautiful, so this kind of looking piece, but it's actually very simple to do. Okay, this is another example. It's a very beautiful piece with all the contrasting colors. Very mesmerizing to look at. And it's actually done by a seven year old. <laughs> so, this is what I call art that everyone can do art for everyone. So, um, as an actual beginner, you might not be able to paint from scratch your own portrait, but you can do a basic art. Um, you can do it um, from scratch uh, for a castle painting and something like this. It's absolutely everyone. I didn't let this art is talents question stop me. So people think art is talents, but I I say it doesn't matter. Because I've turned it into an activity for everyone. Um, I'm the kind of person who like to think about things backwards. So I start with this uh, final final result that I want to achieve. Turning art into an activity that everyone can do. And then I go about thinking, um, how can I go about doing it? What difference do I need to make to make this happen? The, the reason that I do what I do is because um, painting is very fun and pleasure. And um, um, you can see um, every, after every lesson, uh, all my students, they are like, so thankful for experiences because they never thought they could paint like an artist and paint like a pro. And so they are really thankful for experience and it makes uh, them happy. And making them happy makes me happy. So that's why I keep doing what I do. And I think why artistic and creativity activity is very, um, very soothing and why uh, people find the sense of satisfaction they derive from these activities non replaceable because we are, as a human, we are both logical and emotional human beings. We go about our daily life with our logical part. Um, our emotional part is, is neglected. And for uh, creative, uh, for doing creativity, um, artistic activities, we nourish this part of ourselves. So, this brings back the balance of life. So you should do more of it. Okay, uh, before I go, before I finish my talk, I want to leave you uh, with one piece. And uh, this is a piece of art that I did. Uh, it's from my bee water and bee flower collection. This is actually one painting. I have the yang mo, and the yin mode. So in the yang mode, in the yin mode, in normal writing, the painting has these to be complete white. But in the yang mode, in darkness, in darkness, um, the light comes from behind. So um, there's originally white painting turns into black painting, looks like ink painting. Um, I um, I'm able to bring out the black, the dark side of the white painting uh, without, any, without using any black paint. I paint it 
um, I have bring out the darkness with light in darkness. So uh, this is first is the um, the yin and yang and the duality of existence. So nothing is really black and white. Um, it's encompassed in one piece. So um, what I want to um, encourage people to do is uh, whenever you find yourself uh, in situations that seems impossible or unbelievable, uh, think otherwise. Um, work around and try to bring out the possibilities in it. 